I'm coming from a slightly different perspective than the people who've been talking today because I'm uh, strictly a composer. I don't work in visual media at all. So um, I do still consider what I do a form of digital art because computer music is a significant part of my practice. And what I'm talking about today is how I differ from the way a lot of other people who approach um, computer music with live electronics, or sorry, with live instruments approach it. So um, most people are familiar with these kinds of paradigms. For example, you have a solo instrument and then the electronics themselves are more like an accompaniment. They could be replaceable and in fact have been with, for example, piano accompaniment in uh, Milton Babbitt's Phonemena, for example. Um, others have elevated the role of electronics to be part of the duo when there's one other live instrument, and those, there's a load of those, you know, the Berio and Boulez, and I mean, that, that's, that's pretty standard practice. Where it gets pretty, now I'm not saying I do, I'm the only one who does this, but most of the time when there's an ensemble playing with electronics, the electronics themselves, and I've tried to designate that by the size of that box, the electronics themselves are equal to the whole ensemble. So if you think of like Stockhausen Kontakte and some other things like that where there's an, a, you know, multiple parts, the electronics are equal to the sum of the parts. Whereas for me, the electronics are just one more instrument. And I think um, that comes a bit from my background, but I, I think it's also because I consider the computer as an instrument. And although it can have the weight um, I'd rather integrate it and take it for granted on some level rather than think of it as something special or even elevate it as something special. So the digital art in my work I almost take for granted. So in order to explain how I, uh, how I came here, I'll just mention that I'm a classically trained composer and in classical training, um, any work with electronics, be it analog or digital, is relatively elective. I know that in contemporary times, uh, in contemporary education now, uh, music technology is still mostly elective for people who are coming up through composition tracks. I just happened to have the background that was heavily technical and chose those pathways. And, and that included not just my undergrad, but my master's and my PhD as well, that the work with digital um, music was, was elective the whole way through. But I lucked out in um, having a background in technology and um, having the right mentors. So eventually, computer music, both by itself and in this kind of mixed situation with live instruments, became as important to my musical output as strictly instrumental works. So the reason um, I'm talking about this here is because if I talk just strictly about my computer music, um, well, it's just computer music, and if I talk strictly about my instrumental works, it's not digital art, but where I talk about my mixed works is where I think I'm doing something different than the majority of people working, and that's, in this case, um, the role that the electronics have in the ensemble. Uh, let me just ask, does anyone here read music, like contemporary music? Okay, so, Five people, <laughs> five people will understand this. Okay. <laughs> so the first piece I'm gonna play a little excerpt from. I only have ten minutes, so I'm, I'm only gonna play small excerpts of these works. Um, but you can go to my website and hear them in their entirety. Uh, is a work for clarinet and computer, and so this does match the paradigm I showed before, where the solo instrument and the electronics are equal. What I wanted to show about this is that um, the computer is played by a person. A person cues, there's numbers there in the computer part, um, and the, uh, a performer who can read music must play this with the clarinetist. So it is an instrument with an instrumentalist. And um, some of the music is well, all of it is live in that uh, some of it is 
is uh, indeterminate generative material, and some of it is captured material from the clarinet that is turned back out. So um, this should just work. So I'm giving you a pre preview of what I'm playing in a minute. Let me see if I can get it to play from here. So what you're hearing is the computer part that's generative. And you can see that there's some flexibility in the score. This fermata means wait for a little while. And it allows then the, there's the clarinet coming in. Skip ahead a little bit. So there you can hear some of the material where the clarinet material is kind of collaged back in real time. That's all generative. I'm going to pause it there in the interest of time. Um, so the second piece that actually shows what my point is, is a piece for orchestra called August Eobal, or As She Drowned. It's um, loosely inspired by the myth of the Shannon. And so um, it's, a, it's, it's the moment where um, Shannon herself was drowning, and that magical moment where her death uh, is what fertilized the Shannon region, the, the Shannon Basin. Um, and created the river. In any case, um, I, the, the score is too large for a screen. <laughs> it's a large orchestra um, with many parts. Even the strings themselves are broken down into multiple parts. And at the very bottom, you can see the computer part is notated. And you'll see that it has two lines, one that is a single line that's typical of percussion in, uh, notation and one line that's actually uh, a five-line staff, which is typical for pitch notation. And um, you'll see that there's a combination of pitch material and graphic score. But again, just like the Requiem, there's cues there. You can see Q1, Q2, Q3. And again, this piece required, um, in my case, it was my postgrad who learned the piece and performed it. Um, he had to, he, he read music, he was a classically trained guitarist, and he could follow a conductor, and he sat in the orchestra, not in front of it. You know, when you go to a lot of this music, you see the composer at some kind of center table, uh, taking in the stage and balancing everything. Um, no, this, this was a, a performer sitting in the orchestra next to the violinists playing as, a, as an instrumentalist. I'll just play it's the beginning and end of this, because it's where you can hear the um, well, I should say, actually, you can see that there's whole sections where um, they, the instrument doesn't play at all, which is another uh, example of how the other works, the, in, the electronics is as important as the whole orchestra, whereas um, in this, there's parts where the electronics just don't play because it's only one instrument and it's not like the violins play the whole time too, right? It's... Um, so, yeah, let me go back to this. It's a very quiet opening. I'll put it to the loud stuff in the middle. And 
and the computer is in there. With the whole orchestra, it's not taking over the orchestra. And then just at the very end, where did it go? Did I lose it? Let me put it all the way at the end here. A little dialogue between the trumpet and the electronics at the end. So I just wanted to show you one last score, and that's a score that is in a draft. As you can see, it has a numerical name at the moment. This is for um, uh, what I'm calling a quintet, because it's for string quartet plus electronics. But again, it's an indication that the electronics are not equivalent to the whole quartet. So it's not really a quartet plus electronics, it's a quintet. And this is just to show you a work in progress. I haven't put in any of the cues yet. I've made some notes to myself in terms of what pitches the computer material will have to have. I've, I've, most of this is actually written out in hand. It's just super easy to engrave the traditional notation and hard to engrave the, <laughs> the computer notation. So I have to go back and forth. Um, but I've, I know what materials I'm using. I've put in the, and, and so I can actually, and uh, in, I have a paper copy of this that I have handwritten in the computer part that I have to go back. And I'm also at the same time um, uh, developing the electronics for it. And that's what the weird sounds were that you heard. Um, there, this is, you know, sound, as you could hear in the other pieces, my sound design becomes quite polished at the end. But at the moment, so these are all. Oh. So these are all sounds that um, are drawn from the acoustics of a string instrument, but slightly, you know, they're kind of referring back to the string instruments, but are developing both to be similar and to extend the string sound as well. So all of those are synthesized in real time, which is why I had my laptop so I could show you the software I was using. But um, I had, had to record that this morning when I discovered my laptop wouldn't connect. So I wish I could show you that. but. Um, uh, that's what I wanted to show you, is how the digital is in my mixed works with instruments. So thank you.